Hello and welcome to the sports interview today. Today we have with us Nick Martino, a member of the equestrian team here at Emory Henry College. Nick, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Nick, just tell us about um, your expectations for this upcoming year. Um, well, what's going on right now with the upcoming year for the question and how you think your team is going to fare overall throughout the conference? Uh, well, so far we're doing pretty great. Our IDA team, which is our dressage team, we're currently leading our region and uh, usually we do pretty well with that team. And then we're in a new region this year for our IHSA team, which is our jumping team. And after this show, we just had a back-to-back -back show in Greensboro hosted by High Point. We took the lead. We're about 20 points ahead now. So overall, we're winning both regions and both teams, and we expect a good outcome. Can you just can you just tell us more about equestrian and what you have to do to prepare um, and just how you have to go about each and every single day to make sure that you do the best you possibly can? Sure, yeah. We uh, generally, when it comes to practices for horse shows, we ride as many horses as we can and do different tests. So. Usually with our IHSA team, you don't have any practice time. You get on a horse, you have no idea of the horse, so you just get on and you ride, and usually that's kind of how we like to practice. You kind of sit on a horse you really haven't sat on in our barn before. You get on, you jump your course, or you get off, and then you either sit and you walk and trot and carry your horse around. You don't know who it is, so you have to kind of prepare yourself for whatever the horse may throw at you because you have no idea. So that's kind of how we like to go about our practices, and we kind of just do a big team practice, so we'll kind of bring five horses out, and we'll all swap around and do some jumps and then hop off. That's generally how we practice. Um, and then when it comes to our classes, we have riding classes. So like today, I ride on Monday. I usually ride Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, every day of the week pretty much. And it's kind of just they assign you a horse, and you ride, and you have your classes, and you work through issues that you and your horse may have. And that kind of is like in a practice in, a, in and of itself. Would you say a question is more of a mental game or a f more of a physical aspect of it? I mean, um, I would say, honestly, it's about 50-50. Uh, when you get to the more elite statuses of the of the sport, you have to be the fittest you can be. I mean, there's people who are in the Olympics who have personal trainers. They work out every day on top of riding 10, 11 horses, and it's also a mental game because horses can be quite frustrating at times when they don't. You can't, you know, you can't talk to them. You have to use other systems of communication through talking to your horse, and you can't physically talk to them. So if they don't understand what you're trying to tell them to do, it can be kind of frustrating. Well, I can relate. I can kind of relate to that somewhat. Horses have a mind of their own. Yes, you know, sir. I can I can go back to when I was in eighth grade. We were in the middle of Charleston going through, because I'm from South Carolina. We were just going through Charleston, seeing everything that was going on. And the lady who was driving the horse, you know, whipping it, steering it, or whatever um, it was doing, uh, was talking trash about it and saying, well, this horse isn't doing this. And out of the middle of nowhere, he just, he or she, I'm not sure which one it was, let out this huge, gigantic fart <laughs> that I've never seen before. Yep. And it was just mind blowing. I never thought he would do something like that. <laughs> and I mean, then he, then he decided that he was going to do it again. And it was funny at the time, you know, <laughs> looking back at it now, it probably wasn't because my nostrils were just completely fried. <laughs> um, but, and then he decided, you know, to pee down the street as we were walking, just to add a little bit more insult to injury. But, you know, horses have a mind of their own, and I, and I, can, I can attest to that. You know, I've ridden on a horse, I think, once before, and it's crazy because I've ridden on an elephant and a camel, but I've wow. only ridden on a horse once. So I'm, I, that blows my mind as it is. But just tell me, what is it like, you know, you know, I see a lot of new freshmen out there. How, how do they feel about the new season coming up and just riding on the horses and getting used to it for the first time being in college? They're, they're doing great. Uh, we had the opportunity this week at High Point University to bring a lot of people. There was off, there were, they offered a lot of rides, so we got to bring a lot of you know, uh, freshmen who haven't experienced the IHSA show life, and they killed it. They did a great job. They did great, and they're super excited about our program because, you know, they, they chose us over other colleges because of what we have to offer. And coming into a new school and a new program, they're, they're settling in just great. Now, can you, for people who don't know, can you, can you just explain again, you know, because Morgan was here last year and she kind yeah. of explained it. Can you just explain again how the question team came to Emory and Henry College? Sure, yeah. We, uh, we were part of um, <clears throat> Intermont, Virginia Intermont College. That was uh, in 2012. That was our last year, or 13, last year it being open. And through the unfortunate event of that closing, Emory and Henry kind of had the financial backing to be able to kind of just open their arms and welcome us. And they pretty much just bought our program. And where they were able to keep everything as simple and smooth as possible. So we kind of just packed our bags, moved up to this campus, and then we still have our equine facility at the same spot with the same coaches and horses and staff. So they've made our transition extremely easy. But that it was pretty much kind of just how like that went. 
So who like what like what level of teams do y'all play? I mean, I've seen like a lot of different you know levels of teams. I've seen Division One, I've seen Division Two, some Division Three. But can you just explain you know what kind of level um, do you play in, and does it affect or does it impact you know the com the competition at all? Uh, so we are we're not a Division One or we're not NCAA. We're NAIA. Um, however, we get to compete against. A lot of schools, so we have what are called regionals, and then that's how we compete every weekend against kids in our region. So we compete against colleges such as High Point and Virginia Tech and Averett University and teams like that. And then when we go to our zones, that's when we kind of compete against everybody, kind of sort of in like the southeast region of the United States. And then hopefully if you get to go further, then you compete nationally where you have teams all over the country who are you know the best that they can be. So for us, it's kind of like we only have a certain kind of group of people that we can compete against until you go further into IHSA or IDA. Um, do you participate in pretty much like the weightlifting training here at Coach Bullock or do you do anything else like that around the campus with the other athletes here? Unfortunately, I don't. We do. There's other people on our team that have. We don't have a, we don't have a specific workout regimen. However, the elite kids on our teams do work out and they try to stay as fit as they can. So like we'll go to the gym and we'll run and we'll do weightlifting or we'll try to do certain exercises that would benefit our riding and make us stronger in certain areas. Tell me some of the things you do to uh, take care of the horses and make sure they're healthy for, you know, the day when you have to compete. Uh, so what we do is we'll bring them in in the morning if they go out at night. So usually horses get an extended period of time outside of their stall. Uh, so they'll go out in their field, they can eat as much grass or whatever they want to do, and then we'll bring them in and then we groom them so we'll make sure they're really clean and then we make sure our tack fits them well, our saddles and the bridles and stuff like that, make sure the leather is clean. And uh, ourselves personally, we have to be pretty professional every time we ride, we try to be a really professional program. And so if we're clean and we're professional and our horses are clean and professional, then it usually has a good outcome. Now can you explain, you know, what um, what the barn is over there? I mean, I saw some horse over there. I, I've never seen the horse over there before until recently. Can you just explain you know, what that is and what the purpose of having those horses there means? Sure, yeah. Right here next to our campus we have the retirement center. So what that is is we have horses at our exit 10 barn that we use at that work and that we use in our program. However, when they've kind of given their, they've kind of throw their hat in and they're kind of just like, we're done. We send them right up here, up right off campus, and it's kind of just retirement. They get have as much grass as they want. They can do kind of whatever they want. They've put in their time, and we're letting them have their time now. Wow, uh, horse retirement home. Yep, I've never heard of that one before. Yep, but it's, it, like but pretty it's great. awesome though. I mean, horses. I see they get treated well for all the efforts they put in. Yep. Well, that's all that I have today for the sports interview. Now we will send it to Andrew McClung for the sports update.